Well, hello, friends. Rick Bray coming at you from what I like to call the Plick Underground, uh, just outside of Binghamton, New York. Now, you may have seen a video like this earlier about moving, uh, transferring videos from Zoom Cloud to other places. This one's going to be a little bit longer, a little bit more in-depth, um, showing specific processes to make this workflow easy for you as a teacher. Um, and I'm going to try and outline the steps over here to the side. Um, the first step is to get the recording from Zoom onto your computer. And we want to move it from the Zoom cloud because there's a limited storage space there. The second step is to put that uh, file, that video file, maybe rename it and put it in a folder in Google Drive. The third step is to take, uh, and hopefully you've done this ahead of time or you could do it right now, and take that link uh, or excuse me, take that folder, make a share link for it and post that in your Schoology course uh, for your students to find. And the whole reason behind these three steps is once you have, you know, you certainly could put the videos uh, in, in Google and then link them over individually to organize it. Um, but I'm trying to make this as smooth as possible so that you could maybe set this up at the end of the day and just let things upload and go as they need to when you walk away from it. So one thing I should probably jump in and say here, because I forgot in the initial recording, there is a step four and step four is to go back and delete the file from Zoom's cloud because you're limited to how much storage space you have in Zoom cloud, or at least your district is. So again, that last final fourth step is to always go back and delete the video recording from Zoom's cloud. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. So with that being said, let's dive into this process and it all starts here in Zoom. So I've logged into my Zoom account and on the left hand side, I've clicked recordings. And since I chose cloud recordings, that's where I'm going to go. If you recorded this file locally, if you have enough space to do that, good for you. Um, you could skip this step. Um, but I'm going to look at my cloud recordings and I'm going to head down to one that I know works. And I'm thinking uh, this here using Pear Deck for distance learning. When you go in and look at these files, like we talked about in a previous video, and I'll, I'll put a card up here in the top so you can go back and look at it. There's lots of different um, recordings that are made. And uh, I went through that in the other video, what's what, but what I'm going to suggest um, for the point of like student data privacy, go with a shared screen uh, because that's not going to have any student names showing. It doesn't show the gallery and it doesn't show the speaker, right? The shared screen shows the shared screen with the speaker view. And when there's not a shared screen, it's just the speaker, which could be good if you're going back and forth in a recording. But again, for the purposes of student data privacy, I'm going to go with the shared screen uh, because it will let anyone who's talking be heard, but it will not show their names. Now, if you're not sharing your screen in the video, uh, it's just going to have a black screen up there because nothing's being shared. So just be mindful of that. Um, but to get that recording, I just want to click on the download arrow over here on the right and wait for that video to completely download. Now, depending on how big the file is and depending on where you are, uh, that might take a little while, but you can see in this case, it, it didn't take very long at all. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of a in between step one and step two is I'm going to go get this file. So I'm going to say show it and I'm going to rename it because at least on my Mac, this is how the files get named. I've seen sometimes on Windows, uh, it names it like zoom underscore zero. So they're all going to be called that. So what I would suggest doing is renaming this file with the date of the lecture that you're giving or the lesson that you're giving or what the topic is, something so that you know and your students know. I'm really thinking this would maybe be the date that I taught, like what lesson uh, date this was so it can be organized for the future. So if it's today, I'm going to call it uh, 8 uh, November 2020. Perfect, and I'm good to go. All right, so that's step one. Step two is to head over to Google Drive. And once you've set up this folder once, you don't have to set it up anymore. Uh, but I'm going to make a new folder, right? And I'm going to call it, uh, we'll just pretend this is like my chemistry course, right? So maybe I'm going to call it Regents Chemistry Recorded Lessons. And I'm going to create that folder. If I have already created that folder, I just want to go into that folder and um, I want to put my lesson there, right? I want to, I want to put it there. So um, 
with just about anything. I could come here and I could drag it over and you'll notice it does say drop files to instantly upload them. So I let go and boop, they get uploaded. I could also do like a new file upload and go find it. Um, just like you are attaching a file to an email. Now, again, this process could take a little while, depending on how big the recording is and what your network speed is looking like. Um, the last step to really make this work is to, uh, I'm going to come up here and click on the folder name and select share. And you, you have a little bit of an option here. Um, I'm going to change this because I do everything as anyone with the link. And again, in case you need to see that again, um, from here, I said share and I'm going to click here and say anyone with the link can view. Um, if you're putting this in Schoology, there's a good chance that your students are the one logging into it. So you could possibly have it inside their domain, but like maybe if a parent is looking at it, they're not inside your domain if they're going through parent access. So it's, it's up to you. Um, anyone with the link will guarantee access, but you know, again, personal preference for you on that one. Um, but I'm going to now copy this link and I guess this is technically my third step. I'm going to head over to a course I have in Schoology, if this was my real course. Um, and I could either say add, and I'm going to add a link, or um, if I wanted to add it somewhere specifically, I could maybe at the top of the list, I could hover my mouse on these lines between items. And you'll notice the line turns a dotted, uh, dashed rather, green line with a little plus on the side. That lets me build right there. Uh, and I'm going to select a link, because this is a link I'm putting in here. And I'm going to paste my link up top. I'm going to title it recorded lessons and I'm going to have it display in a new window just to be safe. I want to do that with all my links. I'm going to have it published. That's great. Life is good. Boop. And I'm going to click that there. Now in theory, right? Uh, these are all the steps that you have to do, but some of them you only have to do once. Uh, namely step three, this adding it to Schoology, I only have to do this once uh, because when I put this here, right, what you'll notice is it takes my students right to that folder that I shared with them where all of the lessons will be listed. And if I wanted to, I could make a folder for each unit or a folder for each week. Uh, I'm going to come back up so you can see me. There we go. So I could make a folder for each week, um, each, you know, unit, whatever the case may be. Sorry, had to sneeze. Um, so I could break it up if I want, or I could just have all the folders there. So reviewing these steps again, really what I would suggest is before you have anything, create that folder in Google Drive, share that folder so that anyone with the link can view it, and put that link in your Schoology course labeled something like recorded lessons. Once that process is done, you don't have to do that again. Certainly you have to copy it for your other courses, but you could use the same folder if it's the same uh, material. And again, once that's done, you don't have to come back to it. At that point, what happens is you go to Zoom, you download the video, and, uh, sorry, I just thought of something. You download the video, take that video and put it into your Google Drive folder. That's the process that could take a while. But once you uh, set it to upload to that folder, you're done. You don't have to do anything else. The link you gave your students, it will take them to that updated folder where all of the new content will be. Now, um, the fourth step, and I forgot to mention this in the beginning, so you probably already saw, I kind of cut myself back in and said there's a fourth step. The fourth step is to head back to Zoom and delete the recording from Zoom because otherwise you're still using up data space. So to do that, I'm going to head back into Zoom right here, and I'm going to head back to my recordings. And once I'm there, I can, and it loads, there we go, I can click on an example and say, delete selected recording. I don't, delete all would be if there was like a lot of them. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. I don't want to delete all of them. I could select a couple and delete those two. Uh, because again, you're limited, your district is limited by how much file space you have to store, uh, sorry, how much storage space you have in Zoom. So deleting the recordings when you're done is pretty darn important. So again, just one quick recap looking at it. Uh, first step is to download the file from Zoom. Second step is to put that file, that recording in your Google Drive folder, and then you should be all set. Assuming step three, you put that 
folder as a share uh, so that anyone with the link can view. And you put that in Schoology. And then step four, always go back and delete that file from Zoom's cloud. So that's it. Again, I know it's a little bit more in-depth video, but I hope that helped you out. As always, if you have any questions, you're more than likely, uh, more than welcome to reach out to me through our booking page. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. Keep up the great work. Take care.